Hey, it's Amanda, and you are watching a segment from 100 Videos in 100 Days. This started out as a challenge to myself to prove that freedom can come from authenticity and vulnerability, and that life doesn't have to be perfect or look perfect, doesn't have to feel perfect to be valuable. To really be valuable and that you don't have to wait to share your gifts till it all looks a certain way. And this is also about what the cost is of waiting to share your gifts. Um, I didn't have a YouTube channel before this. I never did a video of myself. I didn't like to see myself in camera. So am I scared every time I do this? Yes. But I'm here, I'm showing up because I'm committed to this conversation about freedom. And the freer I get, I believe the freer you will get. So I invite you to participate as you can. There's no editing here. I get one take. So if it all goes to hell, you go with me. <laughs> there may be swearing, there may be crying. I may get up and walk around. That's just, it's the game. It's authentic and vulnerable. I mean, I will look different every day. So, that's really the point of it is in life there's no editing, there's no redos. So who are you gonna be? How are you gonna show up? What, what would that look like and what would be, what would be possible if you just showed up exactly as you were and let the cards fall? Would that be freeing? It is to me. And if it is to you, I hope you get something out of these. If there's anything that I say that rubs you wrong or feels off, discard it immediately. It's not for you. It's for whoever needs it, and most likely for me. So when this turns off and the next one turns on, I will be sitting here quietly with my eyes closed. You're not walking into any special session that you're not supposed to see. Everything's transparent here. So I just, I started this to have context in the beginning because I can see people are jumping in the middle of the series and I just want to make sure everyone feels included. So I will see you soon. That red flush is coming up in my cheeks. And I noticed last night, because I was up half the night um, entertaining <clears throat> my ego. Um, but when I feel rage or anger down inside, my cheeks get red. And it is seriously for like five seconds, but it's very strange. Like I was putting um, subtitles in the closed captioning. I was trying to figure out how to do that on YouTube because I've never done it. And so I was figuring it out and I went to my very first video, which I have never watched again. And um, so I was trying to type that in, but watch her. And then I could feel my face keep lighting up like a light bulb, like, oh, yeah, we said that. Oh, yeah, we felt that. Oh, oh, yeah. Poor girl. I wanted to give her a hug. And then I thought she was brave. And that little stinker has me here today. Damn brave people. <laughs> <coughs> so, no clue what's coming out today. I had one of the wilder nights since we started this. <sighs> and I said, like, the more I distinguish this, the ego is going to have to make runs at me that it hasn't run done before to shut me up, to make me fall asleep again and believe what it's telling me, what it's showing me. It's just getting harder for it, but so it's trying extra hard. I woke up just feeling totally 
I could completely, but very paralyzed in anxiety, and we just woke up in it. And that's happened several nights the last few days. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Um, and I haven't been taking the anxiety stuff, so I get to sit and deal with it. And I tried something new. It, it came to me to do last night. Because I could see I was resisting it. I was making it wrong. I shouldn't be feeling anxiety. Doing all this stuff, I shouldn't feel it. Well, that's exactly why you would feel it. Because you're letting the ego go. It's not in charge. And you're actually seeing it. So it's going to come in at every angle you hadn't seen before. A new story, new feelings, new sensations. I mean, I was having pain in my foot. Then I got a shot in my ear. Then my eye twitches, which I now know is because rage I haven't dealt with. You know, in movies, when they show someone they're angry and they're sitting there like, like a dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right there. And you know when it started? The number 30 video when I was sharing about growing up, it twitched. And because you don't know me, you wouldn't probably know that, but my daughter, when she watched it, she goes, your eye did that twitching thing. And it hadn't done it for months, but there was about six solid months where it did it all day, every day, when, after I'd taken care of my dad. And then I had to kind of take a break at my sister's house. I've never had my eye do that, and it was relentless, and it drove me crazy. So it was from stress, but I didn't know where. So now that I talked about my childhood and stuff that's in there, yeah, it's like, eh. So it's there's some rage in there. Um, there's a lot I could share about last night, and I keep hesitating on this projection thing. I know I've talked a little bit about it. I was texting a friend and I was explaining to her how we think we have addictions, we think we have certain emotions, we like anxiety, and explained to her how it's in a projection and that how almost no one will ever see it. When I don't think we're taught about them properly. You hear, oh, well, he was totally projecting on me because that's not what I said, that was his stuff. And that, that is a form of projection. And then there's, well, I could see I was really projecting on them. Like, I get that was my stuff and I was making it their stuff, but it was really me. So there's those two that we kind of use as, not slang, but just, oh yeah, totally projecting. But if you really knew what a projection was, I feel fear to share it. I feel more fear because I know, or what I think would happen is, I don't even know. I know that I have to go into deep detail to help people understand. Because for whatever reason, and I don't know if it was because this is the experience I had of being able to see one in like a 3D movie, and I was actually able to take it apart and stand there and experience it all, hear it all, understand how it worked. And so now as I'm uncovering things, I'm starting to see those, and then when they come up, it takes a minute to see, because you can't see it. It's so fast. It's before you can even have a thought. It's already there. But I guess I really want people to get that if they could get what these are and could step outside of them or learn their way to work with them, you'd be unstoppable. I'm not, I'm not fucking around. So if you think my mind wants me to share that with anyone, let alone myself, write that down, share it out loud. No. No. And for 41 videos, I've thought about it, and then I don't. So of course I will, because it's going to piss off the ego. Well, hell, I'm going there. I also had an experience several years ago where I was thinking about things I learned, and I'd just been through a very extreme process down in Atlanta, and I don't... Maybe it'll go on the book. Very personal, very probably intimidating to people, but it's the extremes I've been willing to go to, to see what's what. I'm so tired of everyone telling me what's what. I want to know what's what. Like, let me go inside. And it was literally three days of me being up in here. It was terrifying. And when it got back, there was so much residual stuff about it that I had experience of darkness coming in my room, whatever that means, and I could elaborate, but I'm not going to here. And I don't know why, but I'm just not going to right now. 
but because so much stuff was coming out of me, information and what I wanted to share and how I could help people, it was just in my face like, you shut your goddamn mouth. Shut it. You tell anyone, you'll suffer. And I forgot about that till recently. And I remember telling a friend who's very intuitive, he's actually my counselor for a long time, and he was looking at doing the thing I did, and I told him what happened. And his eyes were huge, and he's like, you can't do it. I mean, you, you can't. You can't go out and say any of it. And I'm like, what? He's like, I can feel what you're talking about, and he can say things before I can say them. And he's like, no, this is serious. Like, whatever it is you can share, if it really could make a difference, there's, they're going to, they would try and stop you. Whatever the darkness is in you or just society in general, like, that's going to come out at you. And he was protective of me. He's like, so what do you think you'll do? And I said, oh, well, I'll go share it, of course. I don't care what or who you are. If you come up to me and tell me I can't and I shouldn't, for the distinct reason that it would make a difference for people, people could be freed if they really could take it on and study it. Every thought and feeling that came their way, they could see through it and move through it. And it doesn't matter what the circumstances, it could, they could see it and move right out of it and then be in a clear space. And the more they practice it, the faster and faster they could get. And maybe it's taught somewhere else. I've never seen it that way. And when I describe it to people, their eyes go like, what? We do what? I'm like, yeah. I know. I've had these weird experiences my whole life. So let's just say, I, okay, so I woke up in anxiety last night. And I was trying to... It's so stuck, it doesn't want us to talk about it. Hmm. I, I really mostly just think it's because I feel like I want to draw it out, paint it out, write it out, so you guys absolutely understand. It's just not like a, oh, that's interesting. It's you, you get it so that it will completely empower you. Like, oh, that's what's going on? So I'll just say I woke up with anxiety and then I started resisting it. This shouldn't be happening. I shouldn't be feeling it. I've been working on all this stuff. What's going on? You know, just because my mind will argue with itself to, ha to make me feel like it's on my side. And then I went, oh wait, I just got to sink down into the feeling. So I felt the anxiety and usually that subsides, subsides it. Or if I can see I'm anxious, I can see my mind's way out ahead, trying to figure something out, I can't. So I just remember to come right here, like make sure I can feel something with my hands and just, I'm safe, just stay right here, just stay right here. And then it will subside because your mind can't fight ghosts, it can't fight the future. It can only do what's right here and it's never stressed about what's right here, right now. Um, and then I thought, this is a projection. Now I've worked with it in different ways, but I hadn't worked on it as a feeling necessarily because it was so real. I was so trapped in it. I hurt all over. My legs ached. Everything was just, you know, I'm not having to start working out yet. Like I signed up for this marathon type thing, but I didn't start it. So it was not like I would have pain from that. Pain from the fly. Um, so I just, I knew that's what it was coming from, but it took me probably five, ten minutes to even realize it. And I don't think I ever thought of a projection as anxiety. So I stepped to the side of it. And I let it run by. You know in the movies when the bad guy's chasing the kid and the kid zips to the side like this, and then they turn their head like this. Hey, I'm sure this looks funny. <laughs> and then they run past, you, you hear of the soldiers running, or they show their feet, and the kid's just sitting there up against the wall like, and then he looks both ways and then takes off running back the other way. Yep. That's what it looked like. So, what the hell at this point? I mean, I had anxiety, here I was. I was sunk down the feeling so I could see the mind was running stuff. I could see I was safe, but that's when I realized this is a projection going on out there, and now I've got to 
step outside of it, and I did. It took about two minutes, but because I've practiced practiced this a couple times now, I went, okay, now there's going to be painful feelings coming with it because it doesn't want you to know that you you did it. So basically, it's going to last as long as there's a bunch of soldiers running past you. So that could be one person, it could be 30. So you just got to sit there, and then they run past, and anxiety was gone. And not just like, it was just, it was there and it wasn't. It took about two minutes of me going, hey, no, like this. It's my Superman, my Spider-Man movie moment. Um, yeah. And then it went, and I could not believe it. Because as real as you think your life is, it's only because the projection is telling you so. To the tiniest detail, it's telling you. So what I'm starting to see why it's so important to feel your feelings and remember I said and define your feelings because your mind is going to throw feelings at you inside this projection I'm sorry I know maybe you want me to go into detail and I will but I'm still starting some stuff I'm just going to trust that this isn't it and I'm feeling rage right now <laughs> so er, uh, I'm not going to punch the camera I'm not going to do it. Um, so that's why it's so important to know what your feelings are and have them come through because some of them are the original ones, right? Sad, mad, happy, um, joy. There's ones that are just the original ones that you got to film that go through. The ones that get funky are anxiety, depression, bliss, uh, I don't know, kind of the ones that all fall out of that. I'm starting to think those ones are just false ones. Let's go with that right now. This is evolving out loud, so it could change tomorrow, but I'm going with that today. That it's telling you you feel. Like I told you, it shows you movies about it and don't go there and feel afraid of it. But I also think it's just inserting it so that you start feeling it. And because you don't know your choice, you just run with it. And as long as you let the projector stay on, with that film, you will think you're in it. You'll have no choice. And you'll think things fix it for a while, but then you notice it comes back. It's because the projection's still going. And everyone does it. And I wish they would teach it. And maybe that's my upbeat job. Oh, yeah. I'm very reluctant about all this. I. I've said that from the beginning, this is exactly the, I don't want to do that. But I'm sharing with my kids and friends and saying, hey, they'll text me and go, oh, I'm just having all these cravings. I'm like, I, I know you feel and think you are, and your body will have a physio physiological response to that thought, but it's a projection. So what I want you to do is step to the side of what those thoughts and feelings are, let them run past you. And it will tell you you're going to be so uncomfortable if you don't do what you just saw. I mean, you ate the brownie. Clearly, you saw it in your head. You ate it. And if you don't eat it now and you resist this, you're going to feel pain. So just do it. You already did it. Just do it. So when you start to step aside, let the soldiers run or let the movie reel or the slide projections go past you, it drops off. And you're like, because we're even sold an addiction. I mean, we're sold big time. Well, I'm just addicted to this. Well, you are in a projection. And it, it told you every way to feel and think about it and how you would feel once you did it and it already played it out for you. So all there is is for them to have you act. And then when you don't act, you think you'll be terrified, but you give it a minute, it goes away. Yep, and it's very tricky, it's very technical. I mean, it'll tell you to bat your eye on this side twice. It'll tell you to twitch. It, it knows how you have to show up as a human being, and so it will give you every directive. 
and you don't even know what's happening. And it happens for good stuff too, things we think are good. You know, you go to open a present and you feel pressure to say something and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing, it's so awesome, and you just did it and you don't know why, it's because you're in a projection. It told you what to say, how to have a reaction, how to, who to look at, um, how quick or fast, slow to open the gift. It, it told you everything. It told you to give the knowing look like you knew. It, it did it for you. And then because you didn't know or you didn't disagree, you just did it. Except lots of times we feel that thing in our gut like, I don't even want to say that. Why am I saying this? Why am I doing this? That's why. You're just running off of a computer, which is the trash bin, but it is the operator. It runs it all, even the stuff that looks good. Because if you think about it, if only ran the stuff that looked bad, how tricky would it be? We'd be like, I only do the shitty stuff when I feel this thing in my head. Well, then they'd be, you know, and Dodge would be like, all right, what, what's this thing? Because they'd be doing the same thing. So I think we would go find it, but anything that gives us a little bit of good stuff, we'll leave it alone, because, you know, it does good stuff too. I don't know what all this did. It doesn't matter. I guess I just got to, I guess the, if there's a lesson or the point is to keep feeling your feelings and distinguish what they are for you, how they empower you, how they disempower you, whatever it is. You know, there's a difference between remorse and guilt. Consider getting guilt from a projection. Remorse, you act on it from a heart place. Like, I screwed up. You go handle it. Guilt lasts a lifetime about nonsense. Hmm, wonder where that came from. And we think it's just a feeling like, oh, you're just feeling guilty, just let it go. It's a projection that keeps you locked in here. I have a whole video I need to do about guilt because it's one of the biggest con artists. And guess what? If you don't feel guilt, you don't go out and start killing people. You don't go hurt people. You don't suddenly lose a conscience. You're just connected to your heart and when you do something that's off or hurts somebody, you clean it up and you move on. But it doesn't nag at you forever. Remorse doesn't keep you small. Guilt happily will keep you small. And connected to people you don't even want to be connected to anymore or situations that happened 20 years ago. Keep feeling your feelings. And I, I'm going to do this for the book, but take each feeling when you want to, and write down the characteristics of it for you. Like, what does this mean for me? Because there's what society says about it. I'm like, well, it's good to feel guilty because then you won't fuck people up. I mean, you fuck yourself up. Um, so when you feel your feelings, write them down. And you know, when you feel mad, do you suddenly get motivated to do something? Do you feel a rush of energy? Do you, what, what is it? Rage is a derivative. We have our, just our main emotions, and the rest start to get projection. Rage is in projection. Oh, that thing's going to come at me. <laughs> Somebody save me! If I have a talent, a gift, it was to go and say and do the thing no one will. I can't stand the scams, the lies, the pretense, the whatever, because society will never be well with it. And it's only the unhealthy that want to keep it that way because they don't know any different. But there always has to be someone who goes first. And so people was like, you know, I'm the one that gets the call, like, Will you go down there? It's like, yep. Because even when I'm scared, I know that once I'm there and I drop down be present, it will come out. and. Um, I'm, we're talking the scariest of the scariest agencies or organizations or certain people in religions like, yep, I'm the one they send. I don't put up with bullshit and not in myself, first and foremost. So I guess that's why these videos are getting made in this one about this topic that has me a little nervous. <sighs> um, 
so be it. If a thousand people got what the projection was and they really got it and they could relay it and teach it, who knows how long it would take to get a tip to a tipping point. I don't know. Because there's people that are going to see value out of it, even as monetary. Like, I don't think I can have a job because, yeah, because you're in a projection. Well, if you didn't believe in the projection anymore, what could you do? So there's all sorts of gains for everyone. So maybe people would want to see it. I don't know. Not my job to decide. Just my job to say so. What there is to say. All right. I'm going to go hide. No, I'm just kidding.